We're back with Caitlin Huey Burns, Leslie Sanchez, and Steve Sebelius. Leslie spent some time this week with local organizers from the Libre Initiative. It's a group backed by the Republican mega donor Koch brothers. The group says its mission is to, quote, equip the Hispanic community with the tools it needs to be prosperous. One part of that mission is reminding people to vote. Leslie was with members of Libre as they knocked on doors not far from here. Tell me about this neighborhood that you're in right now. Mm -hmm. Well, with Libre Initiative, we've been hitting doors throughout the whole city. It's not just a specific area. We're hitting the whole entire city. We've been doing this since late August. So we're just trying to get our Hispanic people to go out there and vote. You know, our Hispanics, they're one of the least to go out and vote. So we're trying to give them that extra push, that extra motivation, so they can go out and have their voices heard. What issues are really important to, to the Latino community in Nevada this, this election cycle? Immigration, education, those are the main two that people are looking forward to. Do you hear people talking about the caravan? Are they concerned about the tone of the debate or the immigrants who are crossing? Well, that's the hot topic that's going on right now. You know, and the news is, is fresh out there. They also care about, uh, you know, DACA. You know, right. one of the volunteers are helping us out here got involved with us because he saw the work that we were doing towards DACA and we were trying to promote it since the beginning of the year. So you're both seniors in high school? Yeah. Wow. So was, how did you find out about Libre Initiative? You know, I really wanted to engage in it. So I was like, they're fighting for something that I stand for. You know, DACA is something that, you know, I, I look to find a solution in. And I was like, wow, these people are doing something that helps people and benefits them, you know. What have you learned this election cycle that maybe is a little bit different for you? Definitely that a lot of people just choose not to go out and vote because they're just like, oh, they probably don't even count it. So a lot of people, I've been seeing that the community has been like going back a little bit. So it's good for us to go to these houses and actually like, oh, you should still go out and vote. So what's really surprising is you've got all these young high school students mm -hmm. working with you at Libre Day. You see these 17 year olds mm -hmm. canvassing neighborhoods, doing all those kind of things. Mm -hmm. Did you expect that there would be such so many young people who would be excited to get involved? You know, most of our success have come because we have uh, all this, you know, support coming from the youth. And, you know, they youth, they bring their parents, you know, they bring their families, their communities and schools. You know, they're talking about it. You know, friends come to volunteer. They like what we do. They like the environment. They like coming to our office and they invite their friends. And, and you don't see uh, of the particular issues that are coming out. You talk about immigration. You talk about DACA. Are they talking about health care? Are they talking about tax cuts or there more pocketbook issues that yeah, are well last year you know we were uh, we were in support of the, the the tax reform that was you know being um, proposed and we were making calls we were supporting it uh, we did uh, we did a town hall with uh, Senator Heller just the day after where they approved it you know and we had a lot of people show up we had uh, volunteers we had like almost like 40 plus youth who volunteered that day um, after that this year we started hard with DACA you know trying to find a uh, a permanent solution and meanwhile have a more secure border right. um, so there's a lot of issues that we've been handling throughout this whole time do you think the campaigns are understanding the importance of the latino vote or that how critical they are in terms of how young the vote is and where it's going to be maybe not this election cycle mm -hmm. but certainly in the future i think so um, you know i think they're out there they, they know that the hispanic vote is important and they're trying to, you know, take advantage of that and try to be there and get that Hispanic vote that is growing. You know, slowly by slowly it's growing. Hispanics, you know, soon will be the majority of the city and, you know, they're going to need that vote. So they're definitely out there trying to, you know, appeal to the Hispanic community. What do you say to someone who says this is great, but we know that Latino numbers are really low, especially in midterms when it comes to mm -hmm. turnout, so that they can't be a reliable vote? What do you, how do you respond? That's why we're out here every day, two months, every single day, um, you know, hitting doors. Like this weekend, we hit over 2,000 doors, you know, from Friday to Sunday. We believe we're making a big difference as well. And slowly and steadily, we're getting there. And the Hispanic people are waking up and they're being more engaged in, in all this whole process. And Leslie Sanchez is here with us, along with Caitlin Huey Burns and Steve Sebelius. Leslie, this was so fascinating to hear and to, to watch as these canvassers went around. What did you take away from what you heard from the Libre organizers? Ten years ago, I canvassed these same neighborhoods when I worked for uh, George W. Bush, and we were talking about education issues. And it's fascinating how education is still the driving force. This is an area where somebody could have a high school education, work in the service industry, on the casinos, and be making six figures. And that's not 
not unusual because of tips. I mean, it's right. a very cash economy. Sure. But it's not something you find anywhere else in the country. And what's also fascinating is how young these people are. The fact that there were 17-year-old students doing this, and we and we looked up some of those numbers that the median age for U.S.-born Hispanics in Nevada, according to Pew, is 16. When you think wow. about that, and for yeah. non-Hispanic whites, it's somewhere like 45 years old. So it's astounding how young this population is. And this is really the future. And I think any candidate is going to realize that. It has changed to 10 years and will continue to transform the wow, state. 16 years old. You know, the narrative oftentimes when you think about Hispanic voters is that the top issue is always going to be immigration. What did you find in your conversations with voters? Immigration is so much top of mind. So I've always said immigration is the lens by which they view a party or a candidate. But here it's very palatable. Um, and he also talked about when you get, you, it's very sophisticated. They're using those uh, those iPads that show exactly where voter, registered voters are. They're trying to activate midterm voters who tend not to turn out. But they knew that there were multiple voters in a home. You've got grandma, grandpa, the aunts, the uncles, the sisters, you know, not necessarily all in one residence, but certainly they will activate their entire family to vote. And one person said they actually take the day off and they're excited about it and the whole family goes to vote. Because moving from socialization to politicalization to mobilization is very big for underserved communities. It took African Americans 30 de three decades to do that, and Latinos are progressively moving in that direction, becoming activated, becoming motivated, and getting mobilized. Uh, Steve, let me ask you about your thoughts on some of that, because when you hear uh, some of what Leslie's talking about, I think some voters um, or people watching might not realize just how much the demographics are shifting. What are your thoughts about that? Yeah, no, a great reporting, and, and it's absolutely right. The Latino vote is a, a big segment of the overall vote in Nevada, mm -hmm. and uh, perhaps more so than in a lot of other states. It's one of the reasons that the Democratic Party moved us up earlier into the calendar uh, to be the, not only the first uh, state in the West uh, to do the caucus, but also because of the diversity. That's how Senator, former Senator Harry Reid sold it uh, to the party. So it's an incredibly important part of the of the vote, and not only the, the Libre Initiative, but also the Culinary Union organizing and trying to get as many voters to the polls, and it, and it does make a difference. That uh, uh, winning the Latino community is going to be essential for any candidate, regardless of party, as they go forward.